Bar Gill here. In this video I wanted to cover uh, one of the more common parasites which is ick. I am sure at some point during my hobby I will encounter ick. So basically this video has been done on my research and not on experience. Um, we're going to cover what ick is and we're going to cover the different types of treatments to get rid of ick. Now, it's important to remember that the types of treatments that we're speaking of in this video are to be done in a quarantine tank and not in the regular system. So everything we're talking about, all the, uh, the treatments that we're going to talk about, well, there's only a couple, but the treatments that we're going to be talking about are going to be for the quarantine system only. All right, the basics of ick is it's a parasite. It's not visible to the naked eye. The ick is going to look for a host that's stressed out or a fish who, that has a weak immune system based on its uh, lack of slime coat that protects the fish. Once the ick is attached to the fish, it starts sucking on the blood and eating off of its uh, tissue. That's when we see the visible signs of ick. It looks like a bunch of little white rice grains of rice on the fish's body. That it will stay attached. Eventually it'll detach itself, fall to the bottom of your tank as a cyst. Depending on the temperature of your water, that cyst will then pop after a certain amount of days. And hundreds and thousands of these free swimming ick parasites then overtake your, your system. And that's when the problem really, really gets bad. These uh, parasites, free swimming parasites, will then attach themselves to all of your fish in your system, eventually overtaking your entire system and killing all of your fish. So that's the basic of ick. Um, sometimes ick is labeled as a disease either by mistake or it's just given that title. It's not a disease. Ick is a parasite that is treatable if caught, in, uh, caught on time. Uh, one of the ways to catch ick on time is to do something like this where you set up a quarantine tank whether it be a permanent quarantine tank meaning that you've cycled the tank and you have it running 24-7 with the equipment running in it 24-7 or a temporary uh, quarantine tank meaning that you have an empty quarantine tank and then you fill it up with water from your display tank whenever you want to use it and then you do constant water changes because that ammonia is going to continue to want to spike. Alright, here's a powder blue tang that has some um, ick on it. As you can see, it has white specks all over it. It looks like little pieces of grains of rice all over its skin. That's the visual effects of ick. Also, you'll see your fish exhibit other symptoms such as flashing, um, scratching its body against the surface of equipment or rocks in the system and is trying to get that ick off of its body. Eventually because it goes through its cycles the fish is going to be overtaken with this ick and eventually die. Okay in this next segment of the video I like to talk about hyposalinity. Hyposalinity or hypo is a process of lowering the specific gravity of your water to approximately 1.08 to 1.01 and keeping it there for approximately four weeks. The idea to hyposalinity is that the parasite cannot live in waters with such low specific gravity while your fish can but you're right at that fine line where you're going to start causing harm to your fish so it's ultra important uh, when you're doing hypo to ensure that your water level stays exactly the same throughout the process um, if the water level starts to drop, of course your salinity is going to start to raise and it's going to be uh, counterproductive. That parasite that you're trying to get rid of, in this case ick, um, is going to come, come to life and uh, the whole cycle of the parasite's life is going to restart again. So it's really important to keep that water level where you want it and uh, don't let it rise or drop during this, this process. If you have an auto top off, that will probably work uh, to your advantage. Also, the hydrometers that are out there, the plastic ones with the swing arms, probably wouldn't suit the need for um, that you have to be precise with the 
specific gravity in a hyposalinity situation. Highly recommend that you get a refractometer like this one here uh, to measure the specific gravity of the water. Hyposalinity will only cure ick. Okay? It only cures ick. No other parasites. So if you have an issue with your fish, my understanding is that hyposalinity is only to cure ick. Um, oftentimes, uh, copper is used to treat ick. If you're doing hypo salinity, you do not add uh, copper to the water. That will definitely kill your fish because uh, it becomes extremely toxic with that lower specific gravity. Um, the introduction of copper will kill your fish. For the exception of cupramine products, but then again, if you're adding medications to the water, the whole point of doing hyposalinity is not to uh, add those poisons to your fish um, which affect of course their kidneys and livers. Hyposalinity is probably going to be the first step in trying to cure your egg problem in a uh, quarantine tank situation. You notice that I have a bare bottom uh, quarantine tank. The purpose is that we don't want to put any sand in there, we don't want to put live rock in there any kind of critters that live in the in the sand or on the rock will die as a result of hyposalinity so you don't want them in the system you don't want to have any strong pumps in the system while hyposalinity is going the way you're going to bring down the salinity of your quarantine system is to do water changes and then replace the water that's been removed with RODI water the salinity change should be gradual over a period of two to three days so that you don't uh, shock the fish I've never done this. I've never used Arm & Hammer baking soda, but there's a method where you can use Arm & Hammer baking soda, mix it in with some RODI water. I've read you could even bake it in an oven and then place in RODI water and mix it so that it will become your buffer to create um, your to raise your pH levels. Do your research on that. I, I've never done it. I don't know how to do it, so I'm just throwing it out there as a as for your information only so that you can go out and uh, research that part of yourself. It's recommended that you don't use something like Bionic in here, uh, some kind of chemical based uh, item that, that raises the pH level. Okay, so your quarantine tank is in hyposalinity mode. Your fish has been in there for X amount of time. You finally see that the last piece of ick has fallen off its body. From that point on, it's going to stay in the, in the water for four weeks. You're going to maintain that hyposalinity for four additional weeks on top of whatever amount of time it took for you to see that last piece of ick fall off. If during that time period, say, you're in week one of your four week uh, countdown and you see ick pop up again, that countdown starts all over again. It's four weeks after you've seen the last piece of ick fall off your fish um, is when you can start raising the salinity once again. When you start raising the salinity, you want to raise it slowly. Um, you want to take at least uh, six to seven days or so. No less than six and no more than eight days for the salinity to rise again. And then you leave the fish that is cured of ick in the quarantine system for another four weeks after that just to, for observation purposes. That was a whole lot of information I threw at you guys. I encourage you guys if you're going to do hyposalinity. Okay, so now the infected fish is cured of Vic. He's been in hyposalinity for the four week duration after I've seen his last piece of Vic drop off of his body. I increased the salinity back up to normal ranges. Kept the fish in quarantine for another four to six weeks and nothing has appeared again. So now he's ready to go back into the display tank. He goes into the display tank. The question is, what do we do about the quarantine tank? Well, it's recommended we keep the quarantine tank fallow or abandoned, basically, for at least six weeks to eight weeks to ensure that there's no more ick in there um, and that the parasite is completely gone. That's just a safety precaution. So once you've treated a fish with ick, um, I can probably expect not to buy any more fish for at least another two months because my system, my quarantine system is not going to be ready to go. It's going to be in the, the fallow state. Alright, let's go ahead and move on and talk about uh, copper treatments.
Right, another option that I've uh, heard people speak about is using a UV sterilizer for their system. I'm not very familiar with UV sterilizers, but basically what it is is water is going to get pumped in through one area, get pushed through slowly through a UV light that's in the cylinder, and then get pushed back out. The idea is that that UV light will kill off the parasite, including ick, and um, thus helping treat with the issue. Uh, my understanding is even if you have a UV sterilizer and you have a fish that comes down with ick, you still have to do this, one of the processes that we spoke about earlier. I believe that UV sterilizers are used more of as a preventative to kill off any potential ick that's in the system before it can attach itself to a vulnerable fish. Again, do your research. I'm just throwing it out there. This is um, one of the alternatives that people use in treating it. Okay, copper is yet another option to treat it. Uh, in my case, I'll be using uh, cupamine, which is made by CCAM. If I were to use an API test kit uh, for copper on, on this particular brand for CCAM, the test is going to not be reliable. It's not going to be accurate. That's why I have the CCAM uh, test kit for copper specific for cupamine. So if I were to go out and buy another brand name, uh, for copper, I'd want to ask what the uh, test kit I should use for to make the accurate measurements of the amount of copper that's going into the system. The amount of copper that's recommended to be in the system is um, 0.2 milligrams and it's recommended to bring that 0.2 milligrams uh, up within a three day period. Once the quarantine tank is dosed with copper, I know that that's a poison that that will um, soak into any live rock, kill off any inverts, kill off any bacteria in my sand bed. Um, so we don't want to mix the, say the pumps, the filters, the even the air hoses, anything that you use for the dosed copper quarantine should only be isolated to using it for the rest of its life with the quarantine. Don't by accident uh, say take this pump out and put it in the display tank because it's going to contaminate your whole system in the, in the display tank and kill off your inverts and corals. So that is definitely a negative to using copper for me because I can get scatterbrained sometimes and once my mind starts moving uh, I, I, my body's moving faster than my mind can keep up sometimes and I could do something silly like put my hand in here and then go over there and pick up the coral that fell this morning on the sand and put it back on the rock without cleaning my arm off thus infecting the display tank so we're going to have a fish in quarantine the infected fish is going to be swimming around in this uh, copper you're going to do water changes obviously when, the, when you're doing the water changes is going to affect the level of copper so that's why you have to constantly test those levels for copper and add um, the recommended amount of copper to it so that you're back up to two uh, milligrams of copper in your tank that's it i think you basically leave them in there fish gets rid of the ick you start removing the copper by doing water changes you could add carbon back into it and keep the fish under observation for another uh, six to eight weeks after you've seen that last piece of ick fall off to ensure that it is completely out of the system and then uh, he could go back in the display tank do your research guys i am just bringing this stuff up to make you aware that these are options uh, for ick all right let's go ahead and uh, discuss a couple other options Another option is to use something like Riddick, and it's just a chemical that you would put in your system. Some of them claim they are reef safe. Um, however, I've read that uh, even the ones that say reef safe uh, be extremely cautious with using it, using it in your system. And also we have uh, Garlic Extreme. Garlic Extreme is a supplement that I add with the fish food. I'll put their fish food in a paper cup like this, then fill it up with the aquarium water 
and add one drop of garlic to their food, let it soak for a little bit, and then feed it to them. I do that almost every feeding, but with fish that have ick, it actually uh, increases their immune system supposedly and um, helps them uh, rebuild their slime coat so that they're not so susceptible to ick. There is one other treatment that I've read to treat ick, and that's using 37% um, formaldehyde. I did have a clownfish that had brooklinosis, which I did treat with uh, formaldehyde, and I did a video on that. So um, it would be the same steps that I did in that video to treat ick. So if you're interested in seeing that, just check out my videos and uh, grab the one that's uh, where, I, where I'm doing the formaldehyde on the clownfish. Alright guys, I hope you found that video to be a little bit helpful. That will conclude the video. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to write them down below. There are some experienced reefers who are following me and uh, will be able to answer any of the more technical questions you may have. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching guys.